You've seen him on NFL Network. It's the Coffin Corner with our pal, Pat McAfee. You've heard him on Bob and Tom. Uh, Another Pat McAfee here, yes, from uh, the NFL, one of the uh, he's family's not a guest. Finest, uh, he's a kicker, he's a punter, occasional tackler. Through a beautiful pass last season. It was unfortunately dropped. 0 for 1 this year, right? 0 mm-hmm. for 1 in my life, Bob. Thanks for bringing it up. <laughs> You've seen him on Sunday. Tonight, you see him uncaged. Ladies and gentlemen, Pat McAfee! How are you guys doing? And are you feeling good? Take a seat. You look good. You look great. I cannot believe you fucking came to this. <laughs> right? I sign up for the show and I start getting these interviews from people like around the world, one talking about my performance. At that, they're like, what are you going to talk about during your performance? To be honest, I haven't really fucking thought about it yet. <laughs> but I really had to start thinking about what the hell I was going to do because you guys paid for this. So <laughs> I kept coming back to this quote from Steve Jobs, right? He says, you can never connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect the dots looking backwards. You just have to trust that they'll connect for your future or something shit like that. <laughs> so tonight, we are going to talk about some of the dots in my life that have led to tonight. And I wanted to make it 18 plus because I wanted to be able to talk casually with you guys. I want to have a couple cocktails. And to be honest, kids don't know what the fuck a punter is either. So, <laughs> not my big deal. I always go to these camps, right? The NFL sends us to these camps. And I meet the kids, I go, oh, very nice to meet you. I play for the Colts. I play for the Colts, hi, how's it going? They go, what's your position? I go, punter. And every kid just goes, Dad, Dad, what, what's a punter? And a dad always goes, if you end up as a punter, that means something went really wrong, kid. <laughs> Let's just not talk about it. He's here to sign an autograph and keep it moving. <laughs> but tonight is something that really is just, I could never fathom doing this whenever I was a kid. I come from a family of four, okay? Family of four. We're a tight group, a tight group. I am so lucky to have a family that I love and that loves me. I have an older brother, he's four years older than me, and he has shaped my life immensely, and he has no idea that he did. We're really tight, he'll be the best man in my wedding. Uh, he has long hair right now, kind of looks like Jesus, but he and I are literally polar opposite human beings. He loves computers, he's the drummer in a death metal band called Outlined in Blood, right? <laughs> yeah. So if you ever get the urge at night, you know, right before going to bed, you can't sleep, and you just want to hear some great drums, and a guy just screaming the shit into your ears, <laughs> Outline and Blood is a great band to listen to. But let me tell you, let me tell you how my brother has shaped my life and he doesn't know it. My brother is an incredible video games player. He's really good at video games. I currently, and haven't since I was 11 years old, played a single video game, and here's the story. So, we are playing Madden, okay? It was like one of the original Maddens. Little fucking block characters, you could barely run. It was like the old school days. These kids today, they got these characters that like fucking jump out of your screen. <laughs> this is the first time my brother and I Right, the first time it was competitive. Okay, I'm up four points, okay? 10 seconds left, fourth down, our fourth quarter, fourth down, I have the ball. I have to punt to him, okay? Have to punt. There's nothing I can do. I can't roll right, roll left, get the clock to end, get the game over. I punt the ball to him, okay? I'm the Pittsburgh Steelers. I was the hometown team. He was the Denver Broncos, okay? I punt the ball to him. He catches the ball. He returns the punt to the end zone to score, right, a touchdown. He turns around because he wanted me to win. He's a, got, got a good heart. He runs all the way back to the other end zone. 
turns around, runs all the way back to the other fucking end zone, <laughs> scores, and beats me, right? He, he scores a touchdown, no clock left. As soon as that game ends, I go, I fucking hate punning, and I fucking hate playing video games. I said, to hell with both of them, right? Never played a video game since. So people wonder about that tackle right there, right? That against Trendon Holiday? Yeah. yeah. I kicked the ball off against the Denver Broncos. He's running back. Not today, Jason. Son of a bitch. <laughs> mom, no offense, mom. <sighs> That's all. I'm standing on that sideline, like right next to John Fox and Peyton's big ass head's right there behind. <laughs> and all I can think about was vindication, baby. <laughs> Not against me. Then I got my mother, man, the matriarch of the family. She's a beautiful woman, absolutely fabulous person. She's the one who keeps me humble, she says, which in turn means points out every little thing I do wrong and lets me know about it, right? <laughs> so, for instance, if tonight bombs, she'll come backstage very casually and go, eh, not good, not really good. I think we just stick to kicking balls. I hit a shake. <laughs> I hit a shank or something, she'll go, second quarter, 47 yard line, 350 left, horrible fucking punt. I go, thanks mom, got it, got it. I will work to be better. No, but I love her so much, I really do. She is such a wonderful person, and right now in her head, she's thinking, if this little son of a bitch says one more thing about me, I'm gonna fist fight him tonight. <laughs> you are. And what's running through my head is, Mom, twice a week we have this conversation where I go, literally, everybody else in here can call me a son of a bitch, except for you, because that shit's on you, not on me. <laughs> and then she goes, oh, you're so clever, you fucking bastard. And I'm like, whoa, Dad, Dad, Dad needs to stay out of this. <laughs> now let me tell you about my father, this guy is an amazing specimen. They don't make him like him anymore. He's an original, he's a classic. He literally just does things that people don't do anymore. When I was a kid, he was a truck driver, okay? Then he got into selling cabinets, just basically did anything he could for our family to get by, paycheck to paycheck. He is my hero, my idol. He is this incredibly intoxicated right now, and he's a great man. <laughs> My favorite Tim McAfee story, and there are plenty of them, was this. So my brother and I were tight. We come home. I was like 13 years old. My brother was 17. And my dad is surrounded by cops out front of our house, right? <laughs> He's got high, high socks on, high tops, short shorts, shirtless, headband. He used to run triathlon, so he looked hilarious. And I go, he's from Pittsburgh, he has a deep Pittsburgh accent, and people that don't know what that is, he, like, Pittsburgh people just get lazy when they talk. We're just, so instead of down, they say Don, right? So it's just like, hey, I'm going Don, Tom, Donner, you know, what are you guys doing? <laughs> want to know if you want to go Don, have a couple cocktails, Donner, just like, words just flow, just like, no fucking spaces. <laughs> and my dad talks like that. So we show up, and he has cops surrounding him, and I go, uh, and I'm a smart ass at this point, right? I'm old enough. And I go, oh, what's going on there? And he goes, get in the house, right? And I go, all right. So I get inside with my brother and we're waiting for this whole situation to end. And my mom goes, so, uh, you want to tell the kids what you did, dickhead? And my dad goes, yeah, I'll tell him I did the right thing, yeah. And it wasn't me getting in trouble, it was somebody else. I want to let you know that. He said, there was a car speeding down the street last week. I caught its license plate. And I said to myself, 
if that motherfucker comes back again, I'm going to handle it, right? <laughs> so this car came back, and I saw him, and I, he was speeding again. So I grabbed my bow and an arrow, <laughs> ran down my front hill, and I chased that motherfucker down. <laughs> I said, Dad, Dad, probably, right, in the grand scheme of weapons, <laughs> the worst hand-to-hand -hand combat weapon <laughs> you could possibly have. And he says, funny you say that, because the guy stopped the car. Yeah. <laughs> Opened the door, and I couldn't get the arrow into the bow. <laughs> I go, you dumbass. He goes, the guy punched me in the face, but, but I kicked him back in his car. I called the cops on him. I go, that a boy, Timmy, you really showed him. He said, he ain't coming down this road again. I said, you're damn right, Dad. You're damn right. He really is just an original. My family is just the best. I'm so fortunate to have them. And, and my life from Pittsburgh uh, took a turn whenever I went to college to, to kick footballs. I was very lucky to get a scholarship to West Virginia University, okay? I never said I graduated from West Virginia University. <laughs> Not at once. But I went to West Virginia University, and Morgantown was a fantastic place. I can sum up my time at West Virginia University with one morning, right? Football was cool, but one morning can summarize my entire stay at West Virginia University from the years 2005 to 2009. Now, when I signed a scholarship to kick footballs at West Virginia University, I didn't even think about academics having to happen, right? Didn't even think about it. I signed a scholarship for football, not for academics. The fuck are we doing here, right? <laughs> True story. But what I learned quickly was every morning at 7.30 a.m. I had a class, right? 7.30 a.m., okay? I didn't make it much, didn't, <laughs> didn't make it much. I slept in, I made a deal with the coaches. I said, listen, I will be eligible Right at the end of the season for our bowl game, I will be eligible, but I can't make these classes. Right? I mean, I got a, I got the snooze button thing that just pops up every fucking morning, and I want to say no to it. I really want to, but fuck, I just hit the snooze button. I miss the class. Right? And they go, whatever, as long as you're eligible and you're passing and your grades are good, we won't check your classes. You're cool. I said, sounds good, but I had to attend tests. So I never wanted to cheat. I never wanted to, I don't like cheaters. I don't like the way they work. I keep my balls fully inflated. I just don't like. <laughs> that was just too easy. That was too easy, too easy, too easy. No, but I don't like cheaters, right? So I would study for my test. I would just come on test day. That's all I would do. I would just. I would study the night before test, cram everything in, memorize everything, and take the test. And this one particular communication final was at 7.30 a.m. So I wake up in the morning, the night before I had studied, had a couple of strawberry margaritas, woke up for the test, and I look over at my laptop. There's my laptop, right on my bed. Who knows what I was looking at before I went to bed? We don't need to talk about it, okay? <laughs> So I look at it, and there's an email in all red. All the other ones are in black. There's one email in all red. And it goes, urgent, all students and faculty in Morgantown, West Virginia, must read. So I go, uh, I should probably read that one there. So I click on it, and it goes, attention, all citizens of Morgantown, West Virginia. This past weekend, a circus came to town an African lion escaped. We don't know its whereabouts, just giving you a heads up. <laughs> a heads up, motherfucker? What? what? You give a heads up like when a road's closed, or a stop sign is fell, or a red light is off. But when Mufasa is running around a fucking town, Classes should be canceled, right? <laughs> but they weren't. Class scheduled as is. I guess they didn't see it as big as a threat as I did, right? So I start pacing around my room. Like, I know I'm probably overthinking this, but I'm not fucking going out from a lion attack <laughs> in West Virginia University. No 
fucking way am I dying from an African lion? Not believe you fucking came to this. <laughs> Right, I sign up for the show and I start getting these interviews from people like around the world wanna talking about my performance, right? And it was so interesting calling it that. They're like, what are you gonna talk about during your performance? To be honest, I haven't really fucking thought about it yet. <laughs> but I really had to start thinking about it. Sunday. <laughs> Tonight, you see him uncaged. Ladies and gentlemen, Pat McAfee! You've seen him on NFL Network. It's the Coffin Corner with our pal, Pat McAfee. You've heard him on Bob and Tom. Another Pat McAfee here, yes, from yeah. the NFL, one of the... Uh, well, he's finest, family, he's not a guest. Finest, uh, he's a kicker, he's a punter, occasional tackler. He threw a beautiful pass last season. It was unfortunately dropped. 0 for 1 this year, right? 0 mm -hmm. oh, for 1 in my life, Bob. Thanks for bringing it up. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen him on... How are you guys doing? And are you feeling good? Take a seat. You look good. You look great. I can about what the hell I was going to do because you guys paid for this. So <laughs> I kept coming back to this quote from Steve Jobs, right? He says, you can never connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect the dots looking backwards. You just have to trust that they'll connect for your future or something shit like that. <laughs> so tonight, we are gonna talk about some of the dots in my life that have led